living the way I am does suck, ultimately. It's fun to go camping when it's an option. That's, that's the hard reality of it all. I can't guarantee where I'm gonna sleep at night. You know, half the time it's, it's me moving my shit because I'm not allowed to exist. Okay, I'm just stuck in this dead zone. I can't go work, I can't, can't really do anything. I do wish I could, do, I could get back into life. No, I don't feel like I'm living right now. I'm literally stuck. Some days we don't even have food. You don't ever get a good night's sleep anymore. I can't remember the last time I had a good night's sleep. I'm so stressed out all the time. And like, sometimes he'll fall asleep before I will and I'll just sit there and I'll let him sleep and I'll assess the situation before I feel comfortable enough to lay down. Because if both of us are asleep, we're vulnerable. I try to keep my wife as comfortable as I can because she's stomach cancer and eventually she's not gonna be here and I wanna be enjoy what she has. She wants to enjoy what bit of life she has left the way she knows it. And that's what's sad to me because she's not trying to stop it. It's sad because I know that one day I'm gonna be lonely, be alone. But for her happiness, I stay here. Having cancer doesn't just define anything for me you know I feel like more it's more of a challenge to overcome something because if you believe that you have, you have cancer and you believe that you're sick then you're gonna start feeling sick and you're eventually gonna live like you're sick and you're gonna stop having so much enthusiasm about life and you're not gonna have as much energy and you're not gonna be as optimistic She's from Alaska. <laughs> I ran out of gas in my work truck, and she was at the gas station. Gas station. I stopped buying jitter bean coffee and Costco gas to go see her at Chevron every day. And one day I just got my nerves up and was like, hey, what are you doing after work? And I spent $4,000 that night. Mind you, I had all the money in the world at the time. I earned a lot of money then, and I was taking care of us really well for a while there. I didn't, I wasn't given this glorious, chance in the high school after high school you know I, I actually dropped out of high school to build houses um, at 17 I was already paying for my mom's bills paying my bills most of us didn't choose this you know and they just assumed that we did. And that we just are lazy and we don't want to do anything with our lives. But that's quite the contrary. I'm a very emotional person. Very worn out emotionally as well. Christmas is pretty... This is the worst Christmas I've ever had. I can't change that. It's over. Couldn't even get food from fucking food box from anywhere. I tried. It didn't work. I couldn't get there. So my wife didn't get a Christmas dinner. That sucks. I wanted my family to come see me and they want to send me money. I, mean, I, don't, I don't want that right now. I want, I want my family. <laughs> so what I do, I mean, at least it's only that, but I figure you guys don't want to be include that, I don't care. You know I mean, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of the fact that I do drugs, I, I kind of have to right now. When it comes down to like weed, it's not that big of a deal, you know what I mean? I love weed, so, as you can tell, I love weed. <laughs> it comes down to the point where there ain't no food tonight, what am I going to do? Some days it's something to get stoned and I'm gonna pass out. 
I'm just gonna forget about my whole day and I'll wake up, I'll get drunk and forget the whole day. Or I'm gonna do drugs and not eat. Because that's what's there. I could easily go get drugs. No problem. Turn around and, and go ask for some food and I'm gonna get shunned. Huh. A lot of people don't like people who beg and I don't want to beg. But sometimes it's a better alternative. Drugs go hand in hand with being homeless, it seems like. And that's a horrible thing. It's horrible. Almost everybody on the streets feels like they have to do drugs just to stay awake so they don't have to worry about somewhere to sleep because if we fall asleep somewhere, we're just gonna get woke up by the cops in the morning telling us, you know, what worthless pieces of crap we are and that we need to move it along. There are no four walls to do the private things that most people can do in the security of their own home. So if you decide to have some drinks, essentially the whole world is there to see you do that. And I have quite a few individuals who have drunk in publics for that, for that reason, is that there's nowhere to go. They get targeted by the cops because they keep having contact with law enforcement. And so law enforcement knows who they are and can assess their almost just target them for the way they're walking, how they're behaving, you know, because they don't have uh, a place to go. It seems like every single day, the police are just following us from spot to spot to spot, telling us where we can and can't go, but then we go to the spot that they tell us to go, and the next day, guess what? They're waking us up and they're telling us, can't be here either and it's like we just want to be invisible and disappear for like even if it's just for a day you know <laughs> just to get some peace and quiet and some rest i think i think at every stage of the process being homeless disadvantages you in our legal system um so from the beginning of your your interaction with law enforcement, you're on uh, a disadvantaged status because there are laws that target you as a person without a home. Laws that prohibit certain public activity like public consumption of alcohol or um, laws that uh, restrict where you can be near a roadway or in a park. Um, and all of those disadvantage you before you even have come into contact with the police. And then once the police notice you, you're disadvantaged because the police have an easy target. You're out in the open. You don't have high paid lawyers that are lobbying legislators to favor you or pushing back on enforcement. Um, and so you're likely to have an interaction with law enforcement. That really kind of mentally screws with you because then you're like, oh, well, why bother? Because they're just gonna think this anyway or they're just going to treat me this way anyways. And it's almost like mentally you're defeated before you can even begin. And that is like torture. <laughs> it's like living hell. And like I said before, if you don't have somebody out here to be able to turn to or like have a shoulder to cry on, or, so to speak, or something like that, someone to fall back on, you probably lose your mind just like once people running down the streets talking to themselves trying to chew on their shoulders and stuff you know <laughs> like officer Gagnon and us we bonded you know and he's not supposed to do that with people and I understand that but he's taking it upon himself to like really try and put forth effort to help us he's one hell of a human he's, he's a good human, human being and like, if we think about it, it'll even bring us to tears because like, there's nobody else besides Larry Alexander down at Free Mill and uh, Robert that tags along with him all the time. Nobody else puts in time with us like that. Uh, nobody else tries to put themselves at our level to understand what we're going through and like really reach out and help us. I uh, got a three day notice and we were there five days and he gave us a ticket for littering. Knowing that all the garbage I pick up, you know what I mean, for him. Right? Yeah. Oh, what a dick. No, no, he did an amazing thing because the ticket for littering comes with the option of a diversion. Diversion is going and signing for uplift. They also help you get housing, help you do appointments, help you with phones or food or clothes. So basically he forced us to help ourselves. And without without Larry and Dagon, 
really don't know where I'd be right now. And people who were like, oh, well, he's a cop. He's a cop. Yeah, he's a cop, but you know, that cop has done a lot of good. I think when it comes to uh, AP, um, you know, I would like to, we've spent a lot of time talking about options. We've spent a lot of time talking about what could be. And I think we all know someone in our family, either immediate family or our secondary family, who struggles to make a decision to help themselves. I mean, I don't have to engage with anyone, but when it comes to JP and, and some of the folks that are in similar situations, I need to engage them as often as possible. We occasionally come to, okay, so today, here's what you're gonna do. This is no longer a viable spot or a viable situation. And so uh, we're gonna change this situation. I don't know how any of us are where we are. My wife has a totally different back history than me. She, she, was, she was raised very straight laced. She was raised very high class to, to <clears throat> be an upstanding person. She is what she is. She's an amazing person. Very uh, qualified to do many things. Anything I can do, my wife can do just the same. I can vouch and say that, that not, not a lot of people have that background. And I don't know where she got it all from or how she got it, but and she got a different background than me. But we're still in the same boat. It's pretty insane. There's so many people out here with the same kind of stuff. You know, these people used to be normal. And I fear that one day, if I don't get off the streets, I'll end up like that because it's that stressful. That's why I'm not gonna let the streets do to me. You know, I'm not gonna let the streets take who I am. Because I'm a strong-willed person and so is my husband and I'll be down if it's gonna break us. I just wanna cuddle my husband at night and fall asleep and get a good night's sleep and wake up and feel rested, go to work, come back to our own home and be able to take a shower and be able to cook him dinner and be able to do regular things. You know, I'm a good cook. I want to be able to cook for my husband. He's getting skinny, I don't like that. You know, I'm, I'm a proud native woman. We're supposed to be able to make our men chubby. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've overcome a lot of things in our marriage already. And uh, it's been one thing after another. And I'm surprised that we're, he's even by my side still and vice versa. Now I'm in control, and it, sound, it sounds horrible because of where I'm at, but I'm in control of my life. I am where I am because I've made these decisions. Ultimately, my decisions aren't, aren't going to alter where I'm at. I'm going to be here right now, learning to be humble in different ways, or, or you know, just that's all I can say is experiencing life in a different manner. And I'm trying, I am currently trying to get into housing again, and, and trying to better my life for my wife more than anything.